All right, got the transmission hydraulic pump. Uh, you can see the new oil seal has been put in there, nice and flush. There's that new bushing. Uh, this one's kind of made of a bronzy material. Um, that's out of that Ford ATX or something. Anyway, that pressed in. The back side here, the driving gear, the driven gear, and then these tangs go in first, so they're down in there. You can see on the manual here, there's the tangs right there. That's what's gonna mate up and drive these gears so these guys can spin quite nicely. This goes straight down there. And then it's just a screw that holds that together. So I'll lift that up. Got the slotted screw in here, nice and tight. You can see the gears in here. Everything's turning quite nicely and freely. So there's that oil seal. And then the tangs back in there are on the smaller gear that does the driving. So here's the torque converter. So here's inside the rebuilt torque converter. And you can see the uh, two sets of receiving gears and then these two tangs on the outside. That's what drives inside there. So this is just gonna plug in like that. You can see those gears, the way they rotate. I guess this will be stationary and the gears will spin. So now I'll go mount this back on the backhoe and that's gonna be going together off these dowels. So I just bought bolts. I couldn't video while I was installing the engine. Um, it's too much, too much going on at one time. This is a very critical point because you don't want to damage the pump seal while the torque converter slides in. Uh, but I'll give you a quick run through of how I went about this. Um, so in the transmission here, on these top bolts, these are threaded into the transmission. So I bought two 5 8 coarse thread bolts. Uh, they're about eight inches long, and I cut the heads of the bolts off, uh, ground them down a bit so they were nice dowels, threaded them in to the transmission. And then just to be safe, down here a little bit further, down there, so this is actually a bolt, it goes straight through. So the head is down there, and the nut is here, and a half inch piece of copper pipe is like the perfect size. It's got a little bit of play to it so you can wiggle things, but it's uh, not gonna let anything get too far out of alignment. So I actually had a dowel in here and on the other side, and then I slid a piece of copper pipe in there. Now the copper pipe's obviously pretty soft, so I slid, I think it was a half inch bolt inside of it, and I put a bit of Vaseline on those so they would slide. So I had the whole engine slung, uh, the fuel, fuel filter and the starter were not on the engine. Uh, the injector was when it came in because when the sling comes up from under here, so the first sling sits right in this groove here so it can't go anywhere. It's not gonna slide one way or the other. It comes straight up and the sling sitting on the intake here bridges straight across down to the block there so it doesn't even make contact with the injector pump so that's safe. Um, the other sling just came up from here so I basketed the engine with two slings, one here, one here. And then I had two keto jacks. Uh, they're these orange keto jacks that have a gear reduction in them. And I was able to sling it from up high. I had the tarp off, obviously. So I had an excavator lower it in. Um, and then I could make all my adjustments with the keto jack. And you can just really gently pull on the handles of those things and adjust like 16th of an inch at a time. So. The front, this was a little bit further forward. I was able to drop it right down in there, get it close enough, and then adjust my keto jacks to get my proper angle, slide it over my four dowels, and with this access plate off, I could see it coming in. Um, sorry, I skipped a step. Before, that, before it went in, you can look inside the pump where I put a new seal in there. That's what I didn't want to damage where the torque converter mates up to it. So I could look in there with a little flashlight and you can see the tangs inside the pump. 
So there's like kind of receiving tanks, and if they're orientated at like, say they're at, you know, 12 and six o'clock, then you put the tanks and your torque converter opposite so that you know they're just gonna slide in, they won't interfere. Now there's two other spline shafts uh, coming out of the pump. So again, just have your wrench on your crankshaft and just gently back and forth. I had another, I had two helpers here. So um, one guy was pushing, one guy was kind of managing that and I was just watching it up front. When we got close, I was able to measure the face of the transmission and the face of the block up top and at the bottom. So I knew that I was true to the face coming in at a straight angle. Again, you can do that with a keto jacks or whatever type of jack you have, but you need that adjustment if you don't want to damage your pump. And the dowels keep everything lined up and it just bump, 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 slid right in. It's like a three, kind of a three click type of deal. So you, it, the cogs or the gears in your, in your hydraulic pump they just start to made up and when you rock this crank, it just rotates things enough so it just clicks. Oh, there it goes, then the next one and then the tanks just sat right in. So I was really happy with well it went, how it went. It's really smooth. Um, then you gotta torque things down. So these top two bolts here are 260 foot pounds, I'm pretty sure it was. So I had to borrow a huge torque wrench. Uh, so those are 260 and so are the two on the bottom here. There's one there, one on the other side. So top two, bottom two. And then these side ones here, you remove the dowels, of course, uh, and put the proper bolts in, and they're 130 foot-pounds on the two side ones. So there's there's eight bolts, two in the side, two in the other side, two in the top, two in the bottom into the transmission. And then I kept the machine on there supporting this. I had a jack underneath it as well at that point, uh, and I was able just to roll this back up. And we've got uh, six bolts that hold the front on. So there's two here. One, two, same on the other side, three and four under here. And the final two are under here into the oil pan. And these guys have shims. So when I took these off, I had just a single shim on either side. So I put those back in and I don't know if you can see it. Here's the bolt here. But these come in this way, they're really tight. And then of course you've got these guys here. So these have like a square, a square spacer. And I'm gonna have to clean up this other side because one of them was broken. You can see this is tight in here, but there's a gap. This is kind of worn out a little bit. So I'm gonna cut, cut some washers and uh, weld it in there. And I actually had to, the, the square piece with the hole in it that the bolt slides through was broken, so I had to weld that together again. But I think I did a good job, I think it's all holding. Um, so then I've gone ahead and I put the oil filter back on, uh, put the starter on, and the fuel filter. So here's the starter wiring. You get these two on here, and this little red one is like a stake on, it pushes in there. And then the uh, negative is gonna come down here. When I bring that around, uh, the injector pump, here's the shutoff. So I've got a measurement for this little piece so I can get it right back to where it was. And I put some tape on here uh, for the bracket. So this bracket, it's gonna go in there. On, I'll have to take out that intake bolt and it clips on there right in between these pieces of white tape. So that's the shutoff that you pull from the inside of the cab. And here's the throttle linkage here. So that just drops through and there's a little piece of wire in there. These guys all slide back. So this slides back and then it goes on. So there's no adjustment necessary. So I put this guy back on. Um, this one down here comes from, the, from there. Here's the steering. So this only goes on one way, it's keyed. So this linkage comes down and uh, this guy, this shaft crosses across and then into here. So, oh sorry, that's not the steering, that's the uh, forward reverse. That's the forward reverse lever into the transmission there. So you can see how that all works. Like that, and this guy's bolted in on the top cover plate here. One, two, three, fourth one in there, holding this on. Um, I got a new, new proof meter. 
uh, tachometer cable. So that's got that square, the square shaft, flexible shaft inside of it. So that's new because it was broken before. So that comes down from up there and right in here. So this is the proof meter. This, this is driven off the uh, cam. The cam has a gear on it and then the shaft goes down and drives the oil pump in the sump and on the top here it drives the proof meter. Um, here's my hours on the machine. So 2,723 before the full rebuild. Got a little bit more work to go here. I'm gonna dial in my, uh, my valve backlash and I guess I'll put the water pump fan on and just keep going with components here. Keep you guys posted. But it's definitely coming along. Everything's painted up nice, going in smooth. So I'm pretty excited to get this out working at night now. I got the water pump on. Uh, so there's four bolts. You can see two on this side, two on the other side. So I sprayed the gasket with sealer, put that on there. And the one bolt right here is the short one, slightly shorter on mine anyway. Um, went ahead and installed the alternator. So there's a bolt that comes through from this side into the bracket, a long sleeve, and your alternator is attached to here, and it actually threads right in at the end. Um, and I just realized, I forgot, but this is broken. This is my tensioner here. So what I think I'm gonna do is kind of put a straw around the bolt, and then maybe put a washer on this side and pack that with JB Weld, just give it some rigidity. Yeah, and here's the belt, AC Delco 17540, new belt. And now I can put the drive shaft for the hydraulic pump on. That'll bolt on to the front of the crank there, trapping the belt in. Um, there's a piece of metal that's gonna go down in here. And also I've reconnected this. So there's four bolts and an interesting kind of flange system that holds that with an O-ring and that'll be the hydraulic out that runs underneath and through to the filter on that side. Got the radiator in place here. Uh, not an easy task. Um, not sure if you're supposed to have this actually on before you slide the track together. That's one way you could do it uh, if you're really careful. But uh, in my case, I had this uh, this yellow plate down in between, that was out. And then there's two carriage bolts. And the carriage bolt head, you can see the orange rubber there. The carriage bolt head points up and it can slip into the radiator, but I wasn't able to uh, click it in once the radiator was kind of down in place. And we had, oh yeah, you can see there, I've got this plastics pushed up, so I'm gonna have to get that around. Before I get any further, it's difficult to get it all in there. And then uh, I'm just starting on my lines here that go to the transmission cooler. There's one here and one on the other side. Rewired the whole thing. Um, only reused a few of the original wires. Everything was cracking. So I rooted it through here, put a new rubber grommet in there, sap strap back, put some heat shrinking on this stuff, all the way up to the alternator. All right, so I put this back plate on. Uh, just mounts right to the head with two 5 8 bolts right in there. It's pretty flimsy right now, but the uh, fuel tank's gonna bolt up to it. So on there's the air intake. So it comes in up here, ties into this canister, which it has two uh, cartridge filters, inside and outside, they'll go in there. I gotta clean them still, and then this joined to here I've got a pipe for that as well uh, but next I'm gonna drop this fuel tank in got it all cleaned up it's got a full liner in it so a four stage kind of swish around chemical stuff and then these two holes here are gonna bolt in from kind of in behind here okay I got this plate secured I had the tank in once but I had to take it out um, Got a rubber pad there at the back. I put some zap straps on there to hold it in place. Um, 
because on mine there's not really much of a bolt there it's almost like a nub that just aligns it it kind of looks like it has threads but it doesn't really have threads it's more of a pin and you can't wind it out um, but on the front there there's two you can do those up from the sides so I'll drop that in now the tanks dropped in here you can see the bolt right there with the orange rubber in between um, and the back one can't see it, but it's uh, it's held in there nicely. And then there's two more bolts uh, here, which is behind the airbox. You can't get out to this one, but you can get into this one after I just lost my washer. So I'm gonna put the air filter housing on next and the uh, intake piece. Okay, so there. I got the air intake on, so it goes into this uh, air filter housing. So there'll be two outside and an interior filter in there. Just gotta clean them up. And then I put a brand new piece of hose on here because uh, uh, if you've been following along, I used to have a turbo, um, but that wasn't in good shape. So I skidded that and I just got a straight pipe here onto the intake. I'm gonna have to figure out what threads into here. I think it was a temperature sensor or something, but I'll put a plug in it for now. Uh, next thing I'm gonna move onto the injector lines, get them the high pressure lines run down and then uh, oh, got the intake as well into the filter. Injector lines are on. I got them snug down at the banjo fittings here um, and not so snug up top here at the injectors so I can bleed the air um, when it comes time to prime this. So I'm gonna have to put the uh, excess fuel lines, connect these run them down and then uh, there's fuel in from the tank. There's a little off on switch you can just get your hand on down in there. Comes in through the fuel filter and then from here um, it splits off so it connects to both sides of the injector pump there. So this will be the inlet side here where it goes through the transfer pump into the main body. Um, and then this is the excess fuel I believe. Just recycling back the hose and then out of the high pressure three lines here up to the injectors and then there's a excess fuel kind of bus that runs along the top of here still gotta figure that one out but that's my next step oil pan i thought that this uh, steering rod was in the way so i actually cut this coupling apart and you can see it had already been welded together and it was quite crooked so i uh anyway cut that off it had these two clamps on it to clamp it down and one side of this is reverse thread so when you do it up um, these come together when you undo them they go apart to adjust your steering here's the back side of the wheel here so i'm going to clean these up and weld a piece of angle iron back in there and then reinstall them so i can actually drive this thing once it flashes up okay there it is welded up this piece of angle iron on there instead because uh the metal strips weren't sticking i don't know what's going on they're magnetic but I guess I could put a little bead around there too. Anyway, that's the right distance. So I'm just gonna probably, I'll probably touch up another little bead and then I'll go throw it on Baco. See how it works, it's pretty straight. A little bit out, but way better than it was. All right, there it is. So you, I threaded it back on and I had two measurements uh, between here and here, little white marks. So it's right back to where it was before Weld it up and then I put the two clamps on and clamped them down. That's pretty solid. You have to grease everything in here um, and get pretty close now. Okay, so I put the diesel with some braking additive into the tank. Um, so it comes out of the, uh, the valve there into the fuel filter. So I had fuel right away at my little water drainer in the fuel filter. Um, wasn't getting anything out of here. So I undid the line here and I actually used a little kid's uh, liquid Tylenol syringe thing. And I just squirted a whole pile of diesel into the, into the line here. So this feeds into the overflow from the injector pump and then into the end here uh, for the, uh, can't remember what it's called, transfer pump, I guess, where the veins are in there. So I just put quite a bit in there until um, I figured it wasn't dry. It's got, because it's the lubricant for the injector pump. And then we just cranked it over. And honestly, we cranked it over for 
two minutes tops. And I had these cracked up top, some paper towel under them, and I was getting diesel out almost right away, squirting out. So then as it was cranking over, I just snugged those up and it flashed right up, really smooth. Go ahead and flash it up. Sorry, the uh, the kill switch is, the kill pull is on. It won't start like that. Okay, now it will, yep. I just pulled the kill. You didn't pull it out far enough. It's a little bit sticky. Okay, so it's running. So that key. So I've just been checking the fluids. I've got the uh, rad fluid in, obviously, and we've been topping it up once or twice. And that's holding level. So it hasn't got up to temperature yet. So I'm gonna go ahead now. It's built up pressure too. And I've got to reinstall my uh, hydraulic pump shaft so that this will spin put the clamshell over the top here, install the hydraulic tank and fill that. Um, but it runs. So I've got the rad fluid in here. Oh, we're dripping rad fluid out of that overflow. I know that was me. I had, I will put the cap. Okay. Um, I put the anti-gel additive in there. It's Sorry. okay. Here's the antifreeze coolant I've been running in here. Um, recommended so this is for diesels and then I've been I've got a whole bottle of this in so this stuff right here guards against corrosion and scale formation uh, reduces liner cavitation so that's the cavitation corona corrosion stuff I know there's now cool other brand names but this is what they had at uh, Lord Co so that's gonna prevent the corrosion on the cylinder walls on the inside the little air bubbles shake and vibrate is what i've heard and can cause pitting in the metal and then uh, air bubbles and corrosion so that's why we had the hole in the cylinder wall in the first place so now we're all sleeved out done and we're back running so i think i've just got to maybe just check a few connections here make sure nothing's leaking and then i'm going to prepare to get this thing revved up because i know i have to run it pretty hot to uh, seat the piston rings and all that so that'll be the next step and I'll also get the exhaust on here uh, I gotta make a bracket for that because we're turbo less at this point so where the tractor joins here they got these uh, square spacers and you can see I cut a washer carefully with the angle grinder and then just filed out the edges because uh, this is actually set back a bit so the metal had mushroomed over the edge here so I took her down with a flap disc on the angle grinder um, so it's not just contacting on those little ridges and then with this guy set in there it's actually maybe a hair proud and then I've got the other washer on here and when this runs in it should do a better job of holding that in there so on just a hair of an angle but it's a uh, it's doing its job a lot better than it was. It's got a lot more surface area contact to you there, even though it's inset. Uh, probably gonna take this one off too and uh, do the exact same thing with that one. 